So hi guys, welcome back to part six um, of the build series. And in this part, we're gonna be doing the figures. Um, so caveat as with everything I do really, I'm not a figure painter. Um, this is by no means an in-depth figure painting tutorial. This is just how I do stuff, little tips I picked up along the way um, to kind of create some figures on a dyno. Um, they're not gonna win any competitions, at all um, but for those of you that are new at figure painting hopefully this will give you a bit of confidence just to have a go um, because you can achieve you know semi decent results with some little tips and tricks really um, it's not quite as scary as people think it is particularly with eyes and that sort of stuff and we'll talk about that um, when we're down at the bench painting these guys um, so that's it without further ado Let's go down to the bench and get these figures painted. So here we go. We're going to start with the figures. Um, so what I plan to do is do one sort of on camera. We're going to be using four in total. I'll do the other three off camera. Techniques are exactly the same um, to try and keep the video at a reasonable length. Um, as I say, the techniques are exactly the same where we paint them in the same way. So, off camera, what I've done is drilled a little hole and I've mounted one of the figures on a cocktail stick. It's been sprayed with UMP Black Primer and then just a very light dry brush of medium sea grey model colour just so I can see the actual detail and stuff um, on it. So that I, when I'm painting, I, I can see where the you know the creases are, etc. In the clothing. Um, so yeah, that's what we've done. We've done that. There's no head on the figure because we'll paint the head separately. But we've done exactly the same. Uh, now the benefit of the dry brushes is beard is already done uh, with with the highlight. So first thing I propose to do, as the way I start with all my figures, is the flesh. So I can't claim credit for this technique at all. This is a technique I saw on Warhammer TV on how to paint flesh. Now I'm not painting these, I'm not a figure painter. These are just sort of very basic techniques to get some figures that look semi-decent on the diet. So the brush I'm gonna be using is a Tamiya Super Pro 2. It's the largest one in their range. Um, there's no size on the brush as such. It's just the largest one they do in that range. And they're fantastic brushes, as you can see, it's very well used. Um, and the three colors that we're gonna be using, they're all Citadel. So the first one is called Bugman's Glow. Then we're gonna be using Cadian Flesh Tone for a little bit of a highlight. Then we'll give the flesh a wash with Recon Flesh Shade. And then the final highlight will be lay layered their layer paint which is Kislev Flesh. Okay so they're the, what we're going to be using. Um, I'm also using my very expensive homemade wet palette which is essentially just a very cheap plastic tub with some moistened kitchen roll in the bottom and then some household baking paper on top. Total cost 50p maybe. Cheap as chips um, and it does what I need it to do. For thinning this stuff I use flow improver from Vallejo I find that works well um, and just gives the paint that sort of thinner consistency that we need so let's crack on so what we're going to do and I know people lose their minds when I do this is we're just going to use the brush to decant a little bit of paint with Bugman's glow which is a base flesh color into the wet palette just there and then just a drop of flow improver into the paint you only need a touch and then we kind of give that a bit of a mix and there we go so you can see that's my paint there so take most of the paint off the brush rotating it bring it to a, a nice point and we'll do the face first. So this is going to be quite tricky. I've never done figure painting on camera before, but we'll try. So we're just basically picking out all the areas of flesh with the base flesh colour. Now, 
Now, if you get some of the black sort of coming through, don't worry too much. It's better to have thinner layers um, than, than, you know, a thick layer. Um, and it's as simple as that. Let's bring the light down slightly, see if I can improve what you can see. And there we go. So we've got the base flesh. We can see that little bit there just needs a touch more. And there we go. So we've got the base flesh colour down. So what I'll do is on this particular bit here, we've got the legs to do here and the hands here and here, obviously at the end of the arms. Um, so we will crack on with that. I'll do that off camera and then we'll come back and do the next stage. All right. So here we are. So hopefully that's going to pick up there. We've got this dark fleshy base color on the face there and, and sort of the, the mouth, uh, ignoring the, the beard um, because obviously the beard's not fresh colored. Um, and again, on the figure itself, we've got this very dark flesh color and all the bits we need it to be. Um, so what I'm going to do is, while that's drying, we're going to get the main uniform colour on the, the figure itself. Um, so what I've decided to use is model colour stone grey. And we'll thin that in exactly the same way with a touch of flow improver. So we don't need loads. I mean, these paints will last you a long time uh, because you're using very minimal amounts. So we'll start to get... The main uniform colour on. Now this is going to look a little bit too light initially, but once we have the wash, it will dull it down considerably. So as you can see, we're just doing the shorts and we don't need to be massively careful at this stage. Just need that initial colour down because the paint's quite thin you will get some of the kind of black undercoat the primer showing through but that's not a problem because that creates shade or certainly will do at the end of the process and with all this stuff essentially that's all it is it's just a process um, that you kind of learn over time and if it works use it as I say, these are not going to be competition winning figures by any any stretch. Um, you know, some of the guys out there that are doing 35th scale figures on dios and, you know, they're fantastic and they spend a lot of time perfecting their figure. Um, this is just to give us a semi-decent standard of figure that we can use on the dio. As I say, I'll be doing another three. So we're doing the crew of the command car, which will be a driver and vehicle commander, front seat passenger. Um, and this guy is one of the guys out of the Jeep who stood up out of the vehicle. And we'll do another one of those, um, which I'll show at the end of the video. And I think for the size of the die, four figures is, is enough. Mm -hmm. So as I say, you don't need to be massively careful. Just try and be as clean as you can and not go over any of the flesh because that will save you having to go back and repaint the uh, the flesh base colour. So, shorts are done. As I say, they look a little bit too light at this stage, but once the uh, once the wash is on, um, that will dull them down quite a, uh, quite a lot. So, I'll do the rest of his uniform um, and then we'll come back and have a look um, and by that stage, the, the base flesh colour will be dry, hopefully, um, and we can put the next layer on. Okay. Okay, guys, so flesh colour is all dry, which is good. And we've got the base colour of the stone grey on the uniform. It looks a 
bit untidy, a bit patchy at the moment, but that's what we want for when we apply the washes to create that sort of shadow um, effect. So that's all on. So now we're using the Cadian Flesh Tone. And what we're trying to do now is, with it thinned, is just kind of try and pick out the raised areas of the face and any of the flesh. Now, don't worry about the eyes. Eyes are a, a nemesis for many, many people. At this scale, if you get the shadow effects and the um, highlights and stuff, if you get those right, I believe, and again, this is just how I do it. This is not a how-to video as such. I think you can get away without painting the eyes because if you get the right shadows and highlights, the shadow kind of gives the impression of eyes. So we don't have to worry about painting because generally if I paint eyes, uh, it ruins the whole whole look of the figure uh, because I'm not good at it. So I'd rather create an illusion of eyes, if that makes sense. And I'll show you what I mean on another head. So this one is a finished head. So we're just creating the illusion of eyes as opposed to painting the eyes in. Um, and I'm I'm happy with that. Some people wouldn't be, and they, they want to go all out and paint the eyes. Um, but for me, I'm happy with that. So we can see that we're starting to get a face building up with the layers. So I'll do the other bits of flesh off camera, and then we'll come back, um, and we'll be ready to start putting some washes on them. So see you in a minute. So we've got... The next layer of the flesh on um what we're going to do now is we're going to pick out um just the the webbing belt the holster ammunition pouch uh and the putties around his boots uh, we're going to do those and the strap here which is for a map case um and then by the time we've done that the flesh should be dry as is the uniform now and we can start to apply some washes so the colour we're going to be using for those is model colour 887 from their Panzer series, brown violet, which is like a, uh, almost like a webbing green colour. Um, it's a really good colour. We're thinning it in exactly the same way, so just a little drop in the wet palette. Thinning it with some flow improver. Because the thinner your paint is, the easier you will find it is to use rather than trying to put it on too thick. And it makes it very tricky to get it into all the little creases and everything else. Again, if we get a bit of the black showing through, we can either go over it once it's dry or we can use that natural shadow as part of the overall finish, depending on what we're looking for. And these brushes, they're not cheap, but for this sort of thing, they're worth every penny because they just make your life so much easier because they're just fantastic quality. They retain their point. Um, they hold exactly the right amount of paint that you're looking for. And there we go. So that's his webbing belt all done. Uh, just in that sort of webbing green colour. And then the putties around his boots. I'm very thankful that when I was in the armed forces, we didn't wear putties. It was essentially like a fabric, a piece of fabric, like a strap that goes around the top of the boot. 
no idea. No idea. The boots will be staying as they are because they've got the, the UMP black, which has been dry brushed to bring out some of the details so they can stay as they are. Nice quick, quick way of doing them. And then we'll be adding a bit of pigments and stuff onto the onto the lower part um, once we're on the dio base because obviously they didn't stay clean. Um, so there we go, putty's all done. And that flesh is, is starting to dry now, so we're ready for some washes. Um, we'll do his scarf in the same green because his headdress, the sort of Arab style headdress is gonna be white. I keep going off camera, don't know. It's, it's really, it's the first time I've done figure painting um, on camera, so bear with me, folks. Bear with me. And there we go. Dead simple. So that's where we're at. So I'm going to start putting some washes on. I'm going to come back and show that. Um, in fact, no, we'll, we'll keep the camera rolling. We're at like four minutes. So clean the brush. Now, first shade we want to put on is on the flesh, which is Raycland or Raycland Flesh Shade. This stuff is very good. It's an acrylic. They call it a shade, but essentially it's a wash that'll just create a really nice effect. We go straight out the bottle. If you want to be losing our minds at that, but here we go. So we just right up to the creases and we just start to, to put it on. You don't need loads. Um, and the thing is with this stuff, rather than a normal wash, because we're just putting it straight onto paint, um, try and get the effect you're after straight away. Um, because it's quite difficult to remove it so we don't want to overdo it less is more we can always add more if we need to it's much easier to do that than try and take it off um, these these citadel pots are a, a bugbear of many a painter uh, they're not the best but we can work with it That's the legs done. Do the hands. A bit too much on there, so just take a little bit off. And there we go. So that's the, the first kind of wash we're going to be using. And we'll do the same with the face. Here, where we want to be focusing really is around the eyes to create that shadow I was talking about to try and create the impression of an eye, which hopefully means, well, it does mean, because I won't be painting it, uh, that we get that sort of look. And it's that easy, you know, it's taking seconds. And just try, not to get it to pull, but just get, get it to sit in the eyes, um, or where the eyes are. So that's it for the, flesh tones we may as well crack on so i'll show the the shorts first of all and i'll do the rest off camera so for this one we're using agrax earth shade which again is a citadel shade paint but essentially a wash um, and again we're going to take that straight out just don't overload your brush and just start to put it on there it will give this shiny slightly gloss appearance initially but it does once it starts to dry it will start to dull down quite considerably just as I say you don't want to let it pull um, because it's difficult to get off once it's dry so a little bit heavier at the top of the shorts just to try and create that shadow coming out from underneath the uh, the jacket and into the recesses on the creases of the fabric or the, um, the molding of the fabric. It's not fabric, obviously it's plastic. And that's what we're trying to, we're trying to create the illusion of fabric. 
and there we go so there the shorts done as i say when it dries it will dry with a more matte finish so i'll do the rest of the socks and the jacket off camera and then we'll come back and do all the uh the holster and the webbing belts etc uh, okay so i'll be back cheers Okay, so the Agrax Earthshade wash is all over the uniform now, and as you can see, it's bringing out all the detail and dulling down that initial stone grey colour. Um, still a little bit shiny, it needs to dry, and it will dry matte. Um, so what we're going to do is pick out, with a wash, all the detail around the holster, etc. And the wash I'm using for this is Army Painter Military Shader, um, and it is just a quick shade, um straight out the bottle you can thin it if you want to um the same as you thin any acrylic really um, but i find you don't really need to as long as you're careful um with how much you apply because again once on this stuff's not easy to get off so it's in the wet palette and we just very carefully start to pick out all the detail and it will sit in the recesses and just change the overall appearance of that block of green. Dead simple to do. Again, it, it looks a little bit gloss, but it dries completely matte. That's what I use on the storage as well. So around his belt. On the, uh, the strap there, I'll put a little bit on there. And around the putties on his legs, or on the top of his boots. Now bear in mind, these aren't, you know, really expensive figures. They come in the kit. They're not individually sculpted resin or anything like that. So you have to be a little bit mindful that the detail isn't going to be the crispest, isn't going to be the best, but it's going to give that overall finish. So there we go. So that's that done. We'll put a little bit of that military shader on the scarf here. And we'll put a little bit on his scarf here as well. Done. So there we go. Uh, next stage we're going to come back and we're going to highlight the flesh um, and then pretty much we're done we'll just double check there's no real sort of pooling of any of the washes um, anywhere on it um, and we should be good to go so I will be back okay so we're going to be using Kislev flesh which is for the highlights. We want this quite well thinned. Uh, we want about two parts thinner flow improver to one part paint because we want this nice and thin just as a, as a highlight really on the, on the flesh. Uh, so if we do the face first, because that's always the, the trickiest bit. So we're just applying it to the, very much to the, the highest areas of the face leaving all the other layers and colours in the recesses because this is very much just to try and highlight the highest areas of the face. So we're not going to touch the mouth because lips aren't flesh coloured. And it's as simple as that guys. And there we go. We have a face. So Again, we'll do the rest of the flesh off camera and then we'll come back um, and, and see where we're at, what we're looking like. Um, and then really the only other thing we've got left to do is his matte case, which I'll do off camera. That's dead simple. We'll be doing it in the same green as uh, his holster, etc. Um, and then just the headscarf, uh, the Arab style headscarf. Um, so I shall do that very shortly. We'll get the rest of this flesh done. Okay, so where are we at? So all the flesh highlights have gone onto here. The wash is still drying on his clothing, his uniform, etc. So 
that's it really that figure's pretty much there um so what we've got left to do is paint the head scarf on the uh on the head itself so we're going to do that in white um now white's a, a nightmare at the best of times to, to brush paint i like this stuff which is model air designed for the airbrush i know um, but as a brush paint it's pre-thinned and it works really really well in my humble opinion so we'll just decant a tiny little bit of that again we don't need loads because it won't take a lot um, and then we just start to to add it on to the headscarf just check where we go in there we go we're in focus so we start from the the leading edge now this will take a couple of coats and we're avoiding the actual band that secures the headscarf in place but again with white thin coats and build that color up as opposed to trying to get it to cover in one go because it won't essentially certainly as a brush brush paint or even through the airbrush it's, it's notorious um, so take your time nice thin coats um, and you will end up with the effects you're after. Uh, model Colour do do a, uh, a white, so not the Model Air. Uh, it's okay, I just prefer the Model Air. I've, I've used both. Um, and I just prefer the Model Air as a brush paint. Again, just try and be as careful as we can with that headband because that's already painted black and it's already highlighted with the grey dry brush. So if we can get away with it, we will try to leave it as is. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So again, just real thin, gentle coats, because what you don't want to do is ruin any of the stuff you've already done that you're then going to go have to go back to do. So we're just building it up very slowly, very gently. Oh, having a mare there. Who can see? Just building it up, it's still quite black. Um, but a couple of coats and it will be absolutely fine. So I'm going to do the rest of this off camera because it's going to take a couple of coats and let them dry in between and then we'll come back, have a look at the finished head. Um, yeah, and we're, we're all good really and they're all done with the figures. Not as scary as people think. See you in a minute. So folks, there we go. Headscarf's all done, face is all done. Let's put my hand behind it so we can see it. Um, and happy days, it's done. So all remains really is to attach the head onto the figure. Um, as you can see, all the uniforms done, still a bit shiny in places, uh, but with a matte coat, that will sort that right out. Add the matte case. Um, and finish off the other three figures and then what i'll do is i'll come back at the end and i'll show them um all together so thanks for sticking with me this far i'm going to get those assembled get the map cases done etc and then we'll come back and have a look at them in situ see you in a minute all right guys here we are we are done so i've moved the sticker because i think it was focusing on that a bit too much so that's our first jeep crewman the only thing that's missing out of his left hand are some binoculars um which we'll add later on um, but the figure itself is done as you can see that wash has died down now uh, much flatter uh, which is what we want and hopefully you can make out where i use the shadow technique around the eyes it kind of gives that impression of eyes there's the second one um, again just his map case to add 
um, and these will be flat coated as well so any kind of shiny bits where the wash is will uh, we'll get rid of that so that's him done as well and what we have done is added the crew if i zoom in a little bit added the crew to the vehicle itself so we've got the driver leaning over the steering wheel um, and we've got the vehicle commander so they're all in and again i'm quite happy with those as i say i'm not going to win any competitions for figure painting um, but for what i want them for um, i'm quite happy so yeah there we go so that's the vehicle crew and essentially on the diode the plan will be if i zoom out a little bit is they're going to be stood kind of talking to to the vehicle crew in that sort of position there um, with the jeep or their jeep kind of in that sort of position uh, if we zoom out there we go so that's sort of the the idea behind the diode um so yeah figures are done i'll go back face the camera saying my goodbyes and i'll see you all in a few minutes or well, seconds even see you in a bit so there we go um the figures are done or they're, they're certainly done other than the flat coat and adding the binoculars and that case but that's you know i don't need to show that on camera it's very easy um they're done command crew command car crew are in the vehicle now um and they look how i wanted them to look as i say I'm not going to win any competitions with them um but for the overall effect i'm happy with how they've turned out like i said when we were down at the bench they're not the best quality figures they come in a kit and um, so it doesn't cost you any more money um, but they're certainly not individually cast resin high quality figures um, so you can only do what you can do with them really um, so hopefully there's been a few comments on the build series about painting figures and it's a bit of a nemesis for a lot of people um, hopefully this has given you guys the, the kind of confidence and a few tips um, to, to just have a go i mean get some cheap to me figures put them together just practice um, and see what you can come up with it's, as i say hopefully it's not as scary as people um, thought it was um, yeah so I, i'm really happy with how they look um that's it for part six we're going to be moving on to part seven where we're going to start putting the diode base together um and how i do that and then we're not too far away really i, I reckon another couple of parts um uh, and we're pretty much done it'll certainly be less than 10 parts that's for sure um, which is a good thing <laughs> so uh yeah as always thank you very much for watching um hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already comments are more than welcome um, i love reading the comments um, and until next time stay safe happy modeling bye bye